Will that weakening of the Chinese currency pretty much mitigate the impact of the U.S. tariffs? I mean, it should, as you laid out the map. It should, however, there's always a however. When you think about from the retailer's perspective, how do they manage this? You know, they're depending on, on currency here to put sticker prices on the shelf. Um, you know, if the currency changes, how do they manage consumers' expectations with pricing? And I think that's a bigger issue here. You know, we've been hit with this conversation about tariffs for months now. The consumer's been expecting a price hike. They just don't know how much. Certainly retailers were not expecting this list number four really to come true because as the guidance was laid out for the year, nobody had this in their guidance. So yes, the currency at this point should mitigate some of this, but it's still, you're going to see very volatile pricing as we go into holiday, and we don't need that. Yeah, because because if you are a U.S. retailer, you're not going to be like, oh, okay, the currency's weakened, everything's fine. If you had plans to try to get some or all of your production out of China, either to Vietnam, Bangladesh, the United States, or wherever, you're still going to do that. This doesn't just make things cheaper. It adds another layer of confusion and volatility. Right. Should we stay or should we go? Um, and I think also the, another point that everybody's missing here is, yes, everybody is rushing out to Vietnam and Bangladesh and all these places, but there's basic supply and demand here that if everybody's rushing to those places, do we not think the prices there are also going to go up over time? Yes, they will. PVH, the CEO there, pointed out that very fact a few months ago on a conference call. And, you know, I don't hear a lot of conversation about that. So running and hiding is, is not always a safe thing here. 74% roughly of the U.S. economy is consumer spending. So here's the multi-trillion dollar question. No pressure. How much of the fairly decent consumer numbers, retail sales numbers that we have seen so far this year, are people and companies pulling forward their spending from an expected painful second half of the year? And this is kind of like Black Friday part two here in a different version, which is what do we know about the consumer? We know that, A, when there's really great discounts, they pull sales forward. That's just a fact here. We also know that when they're afraid of price increases, they try to get ahead of that here. So I think that is very much going on. And I know that's a very controversial thing. And, and there's been some a lot of pushback when I say this. But I do think that the consumer has been listening to this and bombarded with these headlines. And for things like consumer electronics or appliances, I absolutely think the consumer is saying, you know what, maybe I'm going to get ahead of that. Maybe not so much in, in basic products, but in the very discretionary products. I think that is very much going on. And also, don't forget, we came out of Q1 with very high inventories, yeah. and retailers told us there were going to be huge promotions. So again, the consumer is, was teed up in Q2, ready to spend, uh, But if you're right, opinion. if you're right, jacked up inventories in the first half of the year, maybe a consumer that will slow down in the second half of the year, that means prices are going to go, they're going to, that's the universal noise for, they're going to fall. That inflation is not going to be there. Prices are going to drop, which means profit margins at companies may also fall because they're going to have to discount, discount, discount. And also, they just don't know what to expect. So it's incredibly hard. It's hard to manage and invest in your business for the longer term.